He's a super soldier, savior of humanity, face of a franchise, and gaming icon all rolled into one. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're exploring the origins of the iconic Halo character, Master Chief. Tell that to the Covenant. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays, and click on the links in the description to vote on upcoming content. Master Chief Petty Officer John 117 was introduced to gamers in 2001 aboard the Pillar of Autumn Starship, as he's awoken from cryosleep. Our armored protagonist then proceeded to kick ass and take names across the galaxy for the next decade and a half worth of games across three console generations. But if you were looking for a detailed story of how he got to be his big green self, you'd have to do some reading. Well, unless you waited until 2015, that is. You see, Chief's childhood and path to becoming a Spartan II super soldier was actually detailed all the way back in 2001 in the first official Halo novel, The Fall of Reach by Eric Nyland, which was later adapted into a comic book of the same name in 2010 and then an animated miniseries in 2015. While minor changes were made in the 2010 and 2015 updates, Chief's origins have stayed largely the same throughout. Master Chief's given name was John. He was born in 2511 in Elysium City on the planet Iridanus II, and by the tender age of six, he had caught the attention of one Dr. Catherine Halsey, a scientist who worked for the UNSC Office of Naval Intelligence. She believed that John was a prime candidate for her new experimental soldier program called Orion II, aka Spartan II. You see, during this period of history, humanity was not yet at war with the alien alliance known as the Covenant. While United Nations Space Command had colonized countless worlds across the galaxy, their dominion was currently challenged by a violent insurrection, a civil war that was ripping humanity asunder. Dr. Halsey's mission was to end this rebellion, no matter the cost. I am painfully aware of the rebellion, Lieutenant. That is why we are here. Posing as a prospective parent visiting John's school, Dr. Halsey approached the young boy. John was in the process of besting all of his peers in a physical contest, but the doctor had a test that she wished to administer herself. I have another game, if you're interested. Showing him an old earth coin, the doctor asked John to predict the results of a coin toss, which he did five times out of five. It turns out that John wasn't lucky. His eyes were just quick enough to follow the coin down and see exactly how it landed. This was the result that Dr. Halsey had come for. John had passed the test. This is where the story takes a bit of a disturbing turn. Soon after, John and the other 74 candidates from across the colonies were kidnapped by UNSC personnel and replaced by near lifeless clones, clones which all died soon after. Now officially dead to the world, John was taken to begin his training. It was there that he was given the name John 117. During his training, John 117 demonstrated remarkable leadership and problem-solving abilities, so much so that he was quickly promoted to squad leader. I suggest a promotion to squad leader. Thank you, sir. Once he was 14 years old, he and the other recruits were forced to undergo harrowing biological and cybernetic augmentation procedures, including an implant to accelerate their growth. Only 33 Spartan twos walked away from the process alive and healthy, John being one of them. The others either died as a result of the procedure or were irreversibly damaged. From this point on, the Spartans who had survived were basically superhuman. The recruits were given their first mission in 2525, when John was technically only 14. Young and inexperienced in the field though they were, the objective for the young Spartan twos was to capture the leader of the insurrection, Colonel Robert Watts. Their mission was a success, but even though they had dealt the insurrection a fatal blow, a much larger threat was about to reveal itself. Humanity encountered the Covenant in the almost immediate aftermath of Colonel Watts' capture. The first colony to fall victim to this strange new enemy was the colony on Harvest, which was completely destroyed along with three million lives. The only ship to survive first contact with the Covenant delivered a grim message of their intent. Humans, your destruction is the will of the gods, and we are their instrument. It was clear that humanity as a whole was in jeopardy, and its best soldiers would need all the help they could get. Dr. Halsey brought the Spartan twos to the Damascus training facility, and it was there that they were given their iconic Mjolnir Mark IV armor. The Mark IVs made their wearers stronger and more resilient to damage, but at a steep cost. Halsey explained that even though the suits were the most advanced technology mankind had come up with to date, volunteers who were not genetically and cybernetically enhanced were actually killed while attempting to interface with them. 
The suits could thus be only worn by the augmented Spartan twos, and they were about to get their first field test. The Covenant had arrived. In orbit, a Covenant ship known as the Unrelenting attacked the UNSC Commonwealth, which awaited the Spartans in orbit, eventually resulting in John's first battle with the alien force. Needless to say, that field test went quite well. This is actually a good time to pause and talk about a major aspect of Chief's identity that's always been sort of up in the air. What does his face look like? Starting with the first game, the Halo series has always kept the Chief's face under his helmet, deliberately teased but never fully revealed. Well, by now you've no doubt noticed that in the comics, as a young boy, John is portrayed as a freckle-faced white kid. Really, nothing too exciting there. Oddly enough, after he's augmented at the age of 14, he's all bandaged up, and then he soon dons an ODST helmet for his first mission. That's pretty much the last we ever see of his mug. Later, parts of the comic deliberately keep his face in shadow, even when he's not wearing a helmet, and the miniseries follows the same pattern. Whether you want to believe that this is symbolism, you know, the mask is his face, etc., or just a long-running joke that's never had a punchline, it's basically up to you. Okay, so, in the succeeding years, John would play a vital role in many battles. By 2552, he had received every medal the UNSC had to offer, minus the Prisoner of War medal. He had also been promoted to the rank of Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, the highest rank attainable by non-commissioned officers. Yeah, he was a pretty good soldier. However, it was in 2552 that the Covenant invaded Reach. During the invasion, John was given an upgraded suit, his signature Mark V armor. The Mark V contained two enhancements over the Mark IV that fans of the games will no doubt be familiar with. The first, a self-charging energy shield, reverse engineered from Covenant technology. The second was an integrated AI interface, which would allow the Spartan inside to carry an artificial intelligence with them into the field, greatly increasing their reaction time and up-to-date in-field intelligence. He was then introduced to and partnered with Cortana, an AI construct created using a copy of Dr. Halsey's brain and voice, of course. John and Cortana were then somewhat confusingly forced to run an obstacle course to prove the efficiency of the AI integration. Viewers will no doubt be shocked to learn that they showed incredible teamwork and passed with flying colors, and were soon off to join the battle for Reach. During the battle, John 117, along with various other Spartans, were sent on orders to reach Station Gamma. It was here that he rescued Avery Johnson, and despite a successful mission, many lives were lost. Chief was then led to the Pillar of Autumn and entered cryosleep as the ship entered slip space, leading to the events of Halo Combat Evolved. The rest is gaming history. As a character study, Master Chief seems to be an allegory or a metaphor for the question, do the ends justify the means? Kidnapping children before they've barely begun school, replacing them with doomed clones that die in their parents' arms, sacrificing dozens of recruits to the augmentation process, it's about as immoral as it gets. But then again, he saved humanity more times than most people have eaten a hot meal. Does that make Dr. Halsey's actions just? For more origin stories, be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays. It's finished. No, I think we're just getting started. Thanks for watching Mojo Plays. Be sure to subscribe and click on the link in the description below to check out our suggestion page and vote on what content you'd like to see us cover next.